This Cage Radio special report is brought to you by Visalia MMA Gear and Visalia MMA Gear of Hanford, located in the Hanford Mall and now located in the Sequoia Mall. Remember, there is no competition, period. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Mont's Cage Radio. I'm now joined on the line by a gym owner, Jim West from Overcome Training Gym. How is it going, my man? It's going pretty good, man. How are you? I am damn good. Now, uh, you train quite a few fighters, et cetera, and so forth. I first came in contact with you when the California Cowboy fought one of your fighters at an uh, amateur event in Northern California. Now, I had Cal Warsham up on uh, my show, and uh, some of the stuff that he was saying you have taken offense to Take me through it, my man. What what do we got? Uh, what do we got to clear up? Well, first, you know, with regard to Cal Worsham, um, there were some things that weren't exactly correct on on his end and, and what was said. Okay. First, I want to address what what he said about Andre Feely. Um, Andre legitimately had uh, a torn meniscus and a torn L- LCL lateral collateral ligament in his left knee going into the the title fight against Josh Thornburg and, and agreed to take the fight because he wanted to take it and thought that he could beat Josh Thornburg even with a hurt knee. So he was doing Cal a favor by, by actually going in there injured at probably 50%. Um, you know, when Cal says that he was allegedly, allegedly had an injury 20 minutes before the fight, he didn't have, allegedly have nothing. He legitimately dislocated his knee in warm-ups. Um, and anyone who knows and has played sports for a while, it doesn't take much when you have something that's already torn for something to pop out. Um, and as evidence of that, he took the last fight um, at Rebel Fighter where he fought for the 155-pound belt against Derek Burns, a tough opponent from Ultimate Fitness. And unfortunately, the same thing. Went into the fight, he thought that he could get away with it. Um, and for four and a half rounds, he did. Um, and unfortunately, he dislocated his kneecap again. Um, and Cal was there. Um, and he probably enjoyed seeing that, but I think it's pretty bush league to think what Cal, you know, that thinks that that uh, that Andre Feely was going, that he allegedly phantomly had an injury, it's a legit in- injury. Um, someone who's supposed to be professional like Cal Worsham and has been around the game for a while, you'd think you'd expect a little bit more from him. Um, but you know what? Uh, with that being said, I wouldn't I wouldn't expect it. Um, done some things, said some things that. Uh, I don't, uh, I don't think it's necessarily uh, correct, um, and I think a lot of people would agree with me. Um, you know, with regard to uh, some of the posts that you've been seeing on on, on your site uh, with Mike Christensen and Cal, you know, there there were times. You know, Dan, Daniel Romero did fight Poppy's Martinez, but you know, if you want to talk about being ethical and, and moral and those types of things, who lets a guy that's 0 and 0 go in and fight a guy who's 17 and 7, and 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 implores that? has a guy come in and has Poppy's Martinez allows him to weigh about 40 pounds over the amount that they, he was supposed to weigh for a title fight. Mm. Um, it's pretty pathetic. You know, I can't take it away, you know, anything Daniel Romero does train with us at Overcome, um, and Danny did win. Um, and I did not set up that fight, so let's just, let's just put that out there. You know, Danny did win, and that's, and that's great. Uh, it was good for his, you know, his career and all that, but talk about ethics. Uh, you're, you're going to put a guy who's, you know, 19 years old against a guy like Poppy's Martinez and allow Poppy's to come in about 40 pounds heavy. You know, Danny walks around at about 150 pounds. So, uh, you know, Cal has uh, done a lot of different things. He said a lot of different things. Um, you know, with, with regard, Mike Christensen was actually the one that was supposed to fight uh, Poppy's Martinez originally. And, you know, it originally did start at 800 and 800, which is obviously extremely low. But that's Gladiator Challenge. That's, that's what you get. Um, and then it ultimately slowly started to slide. You know, ultimately it ended up to be where it was a $500 deal to fight Poppy's Martinez, which was ab- absolutely ridiculous, you know, to, to have, a, have that and, and all of a sudden just slowly start deducting things. And, you know, there was a contract. I made Cal give me a contract, which normally they don't do, um, and that's probably the reason why they don't do that, so they can be unethical um, and, and, and be shady to guys. Um, and that's just the legitimate truth, man. Um, you know, we have. I don't have much respect for them. Um, I don't think a lot of people do. Um, you know, they consistently have guys off the couch fight for them. It's not exciting. I don't. I don't want to see some dude off the couch fight someone that's, uh, you know, legitimate. Um, you know, they do that kind of stuff legitimately all the time. So it's pretty shady of him to to think that Andre Feely was uh, allegedly or, or faked a phantom injury. Injury. It's bullshit. 
um, to even think that. Anyone who knows Andre Feely, dude, the kid, the kid, the freaking warrior. Um, so, you know, to Cal, it, learn some ethics, dude. All right, there you have that. Now, uh, it has absolutely kind of gotten off the tracks on my website. I wake up in the morning, I see these these comments back and forth between uh, Cal Worsham and Mike Christensen, and I mean, like, I just did a video blog you guys will see in a little bit. But, uh, I mean, I'm not a fighter. I wouldn't be talking to Cal Worsham that way, much less, uh, you know, in person, but whatever. But uh, Mike you know, Christensen... It don't have anything to do with being, being a fighter or not, man. It has to do with with being uh, a good person, being ethical, and running a legitimate organization, um, one that I don't think he does. Okay. Now, uh, don't you have some fighters coming up on this uh, Fight Militia card? I do. Um, Scotty Bowler, and my uh, pretty good friend of mine, um, I do. I have Daniel Romero and, and Michael Christensen, and if Andre was healthy, he would be on it as well. Okay. Um, uh, Mike Christensen's, Christensen's fighting uh, Rafael Rios. I believe he goes by Tony. Uh, yeah. Team Stockton with right. Phil Torres. And then um, Kids Daniel Romero is fighting um, uh, Adrian Diaz, also from Phil Torres' camp. Okay. Just a tough fight. I mean, you know, they produce some tough fighters. So, you know, we're ready to go. Um, should be a good night. Um, not only that, we got those two guys are also got selected to fight in the um, Ultimate, uh, what's it called? Ultimate Combat USA. The tournament um, separated over four different states. Um, eight hmm. fighters from, from four different states, eight from California, eight from Minnesota, eight from Illinois, and eight from Wisconsin. They fight in a bracket-style tournament starts in December. Um, the California part starts December 11th, I believe, um, and then it goes on, you know, progressively. If they win, they continue, they, they continue on. Um, so there's a lot of things going on. I have, you know, our, uh, we have 170-pounder. A lot of, you know, I have 25 amateurs. And three pros. We don't have a lot of pros, but we don't let them go pro right off the bat. I don't want guys that uh, don't have any business being a pro going and stepping in the cage and representing our gym. You actually have to try out to be part of our team. You could actually be removed from our team. Hmm. Um, you know, so uh, you know those amateurs that are coming up, and we have a couple of legitimate amateurs that are that are very very good. Most of the amateurs all have wrestling backgrounds collegiately, um, and that's why you haven't seen a lot of them fight lately because they're all wrestling right now. Um, one specifically, or two that I specifically I can think about is Jordan Williams. He's he's an undefeated amateur, but he's also you know he was a state champion wrestler at 174 pounds. He's also number one in the state in, in junior college wrestling for Sierra College. Um, he's also the ultimate Reno Combat Amateur Champion. Okay. Um, and then we have Barrett Abel, who is still wrestling at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. He used to wrestle at UC Davis. He's the Pac-10 champion. So once he's done wrestling, he'll be you know on the on the um, map here shortly. Um, you know. It, there's other thing. I'm going to get to another thing that I want to bring up. Absolutely. Bring up also besides um, just our, our fighters. You know, I want to say something. Something that happened recently uh, between us and Ultimate Fitness. Um, we haven't necessarily always uh, got along with Ultimate Fitness. There's a little bit of a, a of a rivalry there. Uh, we fight each other a lot. I have nothing but respect for them. They have, you know, obviously a bunch of tough guys. I have nothing but respect for Uriah Saber. However, recently. Um, a little bit of that respect kind of went down the hill when, when Uriah took it upon, upon himself to uh, go ahead and contact one of my fighters and uh, try to convince him to come over there to their camp wow. underneath my nose. And I think that's pretty bush league, man. I mean, I've, you know, I've come from sports my whole life. You know, I played collegiate sports, um, played um, professionally in uh, baseball. You don't do that type of shit. And uh, that, was pretty, that was pretty low. That was after the, fi- after the fight when Andre fought Derek Burns um, for Rebel Fighter for the title. Um, Andre had come to me and told me that uh, Uriah had contacted him and, and said that uh, Overcome can't offer him anything and so on and so forth. And uh, I just want to let it be known that uh, Overcome can offer anything to anyone. I don't think that uh, people understand the connections that we have. Um, just for example, our, our, wrestler, our, two, our, our wrestling coach, Alex Grunder, who wrestled at the University of Iowa. Um, so I, that pretty much speaks for itself. Our boxing coaches are Otis Griffin. If you know boxing, you know him. Dan Martinyuk, you know boxing, you know him. Um, our Muay Thai coach, the IS, ISCF uh, Muay Thai champion, um, uh, our other gym owner, you know, is uh, an Olympic um, full contact Taekwondo person. Um, I'm affiliated with Terry Maxwell, who's an affiliate with uh, Casio Warwick and Rodrigo Medeiros. Uh, you know, the, the contacts we have, the coaches we have, the facility we have is second to none. Uh, we have a 17,000 square foot facility. The guys want for nothing here. They get 
personal massages. They get personal trainers. They have uh, all the supplements they need from from um, BA or what is it? Uh, I can't think of the the, the uh, supplement place, but um, you know we have a full gym that the that the fighters are allowed to use. We have a hundred yard track behind our gym that's turf hmm. that uh, with tires and everything that they need. You know we have a three thousand square feet was solely dedicated to our MMA side with a ring, a cage, our mats, everything. Um, you know, we have sponsorships that take care of all of our clothing, all of our equipment, all that kind of stuff. So uh, I just want to make it be known that uh, Overcome can offer anything to anyone, um, and I, I don't want uh, people to think that uh, that we can't. Um, so I just want to say, you know, uh, you know, I, I do have respect for Ultimate Fitness, but a little bit went down the tubes when you, when you contact another gym and another gym fighter. And, and say that uh, Overcome can't offer them anything and, and that they can offer more. I understand your eye has a name. I understand that. But you don't do that. That's, uh, that's pretty low. You know, his, some, of, some of their guys have left Ultimate Fitness and come to us. Um, and uh, I'm not going to say why, but uh, I think they know why. Um, so I just want to put that out there. All right, there you have that. All right, so um, this whole amateur thing, like you were saying, you only have a couple of professional fighters and whatnot. I talk to a lot of guys in this game. Some of these guys support the amateur scene. Some of the pros view it as, hey, you're giving promoters a chance to put together some cheap-ass show, and they don't have to pay any of us professionals. And, you know, I can see some of the pros, uh, you know, point of view, but at the same time is people are looking for action, excitement, the amateurs give it to us in college sports. Why can't the amateurs give it to us in MMA? Yeah, I mean, I, I you know, there's, I, I see both sides, and 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 like you said, the the pros do take a little bit of a hit because obviously promoters, you know, when you put on an amateur show, you don't have to pay the fighters, All right. um, so it does play a role. However, it, with that, I think what's going to happen is is you're going to see guys who actually at the time when they say, you know what, or their coaches say, hey, it's time to become a pro. They're ready to be a pro. Right. They don't look like an amateur when they go into the professional ranks. And, and, and in that aspect, I think that's the right um, approach. Um, all of our amateurs have to have 12 amateur fights even before they'll even get an opportunity to become a pro. Um, so I, 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 I think in that sense, it's, um, it's, a, it's a good thing. Obviously, it's not good for some of the pros because, you know, there's less pro shows. Those who were putting on only pro shows are now doing – you know, am shows when they sh- would have op- originally been pro shows. So yeah, it is taking away from their their um, fighting opportunities, the money that they you know they make. And, and granted, obviously they don't. A lot of them don't make that much money as it is. So um, you know, when the amateur rank had come in in January, it did take a little bit away from that. But I think it's going to improve the sport overall because the talent level I think will will be better. And and when they do turn pro, they 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 should be a legitimate pro. They should be good at all aspects. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, my man. Well, I appreciate you taking some time with Cage Radio. We'll definitely do this in the future. I will be at the uh, at the Fight Militia uh, for that event. I want to give you this time, Jim, to shout out anybody you want, my man. Yeah, I just want to shout out to all my fighters. Um, shout out to Overcome Jim. Shout out definitely to Scotty Bowler, um, giving us the opportunity. Um, he's always there. He always gives us the opportunity all the time. So come out and support the show. Um, him and Scott Adams put on a good show. Should be a good night of good night of fights. Shout out to Mott. Shout out to the Giants. Uh, yeah. Uh, so you know that series is almost over. So I just want to say thanks again to everyone. Um, come out and support the fighters here in the area. Come check out Overcome and see what I'm talking about. All right, there you have it, Jim West, part owner of the Overcome Gym. You can check that out at www.overcome-training.com. I appreciate it, my man. We will talk to you soon. Thanks a lot, Mott. All right, bro. Out.